fine so we are going to continue today our discussion related to partitioning of data so if you remember in the last session we have started discussing how to split the data in train set and test set do you remember we have seen one method for partitioning the data and that method was the hold out method so what we did in hold out method let us have a recap as i stated we want to partition our data in train set and test set so we are partitioning our data randomly and typical values or statistics i have provided you that typically two third of the data which is available is being used for training and remaining one third of data is used for testing so this data we are holding out we are setting aside and that is used for testing right so in hold out method actually what we do is we have gone through this let us revise the concept so we are having the entire data along with the labels right let us assume that we are talking about the classification algorithm right and we are having this data provided with the labels associated so what we do is we partition the training data partition the data in train data and test data and typical size for training data is 2/3 of the data and test data is 1/3 of the data sometimes we may use like partitioning like 60 40 70 30 80 20 and so on okay so once we have partitioned our data as train set and test set what we do next is the training data along with the training labels is being used with the learning algorithm that we have selected right so the learning algorithm will now learn from this training data and this learning algorithm comes up with a model so once we are having this model what we do next is we use now the test data right with the model that we have created in step number 2 and we predict the output for this test data so now we are having the predicted labels for the test data so this prediction is by this model so we are having the predicted labels and already we are knowing the test labels so we compare the prediction result and the test result and by making use of some performance criteria say for example accuracy right or error rate or precision recall whatever may be our performance criteria based on that performance criteria we find out the performance of our model right and finally in the fourth step what we do is now we are done with the model so no need now to keep aside any data and that is why once again whatever was our original data without partitioning right so that entire data is now being used for the same algorithm with the same hyperparameters right and once again we come up with a final model with respect to this entire data and this is how our hold out method works so in fact we had a discussion about this hold out method in the last session i hope you must have understood this method so may i proceed now yes yes ma'am fine so now let's proceed with the second method which is the most popular method that has been used while building the machine learning uh, applications 
and this method is known as k fold cross validation method k fold cross validation method so what we do in this k fold cross validation method see here as the name suggests we are now having k folds fold is nothing but a partition so whatever may be the value of k i may have five fold cross validation i may have seven fold cross validation i may have 10 fold cross validation so what i mean by that and what this value of k is and how we are going to make use of this value k so whatever may be the data that is given to me i am going to partition that data into k number of folds i'll repeat what i'm going to do whatever may be the size of my data i am going to have k number of partitions of that data okay so my training data is randomly being divided into k disjoint sets such that every set is of equal size right and also we need to make sure that each partition of this data is having roughly the same class distribution i'll repeat what i mean so if you look at this particular example we are having 30 samples in our training data set 30 samples this is just one example okay so overall if you look at all those samples these are our data points these are our samples okay so we are having some red samples and we are having some green samples in our data set and the total number of samples that we have the number is 30 right and let us assume that value of k is 5 so we are going to perform five fold cross validation five fold cross validation so what we are going to do is we are going to partition our data into five partitions because k is equal to 5 right so if you look at here we are having these six samples into first partition next six samples into the second partition and so on right and while preparing these partitions while preparing these k disjoint sets we make sure that every set is having roughly the same class distribution what we mean by that same class distribution roughly we are not saying exactly same but roughly meaning that if i am having two classes then every partition should represent both these classes it should not happen that my partition is belonging to only one class samples it should not happen otherwise my training or testing will not be proper and that is why what we are saying is we want to prepare k disjoint sets of equal size where each part has roughly the same class distribution so every partition will have the representation of every class right now in this example if we look at here we are having 30 samples right and that is why if i am using five fold cross validation i'll be having six partitions sorry six samples in one partition i am having five partitions and six samples per partition because i am having 30 samples am i clear am i clear yes ma'am fine so if you look at here in this figure we are having now these 1 2 3 4 5 5 folds so in the first fold i am having this first six samples in the second fold 
am having next six samples in the third fold i am having next six samples and so on so this is how i am having these five folds in my data set now what we are going to do next is once we have partitioned our data in k folds next the classifier is trained k times because we are having k folds so if i am having k folds my classifier is being trained k times and every time with a different set that is held out as my test set what i mean by that see in the suppose this is my first training right as i mentioned how many times i am going to train now here i am making use of five folds so i'll be performing training five times right so this is my first iteration this is my first training so in the first training what i'll do is the first fold is set aside for test set first fold is set aside for testing and remaining four remaining four partitions are being used as training got it what i am doing in the first pass of my training what i will do i will keep the first fold for testing and remaining four folds are being used for training second time whenever i train my model what i will do the second fold is being used for testing and the remaining samples remaining folds are being used for training similarly third time i'll be using the third fold for testing and remaining samples for training in the fourth fold what i'll do obviously the fourth fold is used for testing and remaining are used for training in the fifth iteration or fifth training model what i will do i will use the fifth partition the fifth fold as my test set and remaining are being used for training so this is how if i am having k folds i'll be using or i'll be training my system k times and every time i am using different data items for training and different data items for testing so every time the fold that i am selecting is different for testing and remaining folds are being used for training right now what will happen now if i am training this model for say here in this example five times right obviously if five times i am training my model and testing my model i'll be having five different errors for five models right so finally what i'll do is i will find out the mean error of all those five instances all those k errors i'll be finding out the mean of k errors right and that error will be reported as the final error am i clear ma'am yes can you can you explain that last term that is error estimated error yes see whenever so this is supervised learning so we know the supervised learning what we do and how we uh, assess the performance right i am having some algorithm i am providing some training data set to my algorithm my algorithm will prepare the model right so i am having this model with me now and test data set is being provided to my model and for this test data set my model will predict the output okay now 
what happens actually is we have seen in hold out method also the similar kind of strategy whenever my model is using this test data set to predict the class of that sample that is provided as test sample right i will be checking whether the predicted label is correct or not say for example in this particular scenario every time my test set is having six samples right and remaining samples so i am having 30 samples total number of samples are 30 so every time six samples are being used for testing and remaining 24 samples are being used for training so let us assume that we are dealing with this first fold so whenever i am training my model for the first time i'll be making use of these 24 samples right for training after using those 24 samples for training right my algorithm will give me some model now for this model i'll be presenting these six samples as test set so let us assume here that first sample is red second is red third is green fourth is red fifth is green and sixth is red so one by one i am going to present all those test samples to my model so let us assume that the first red sample i know the class right for my test set so first sample is being presented and my model is predicting this sample as red let us assume second sample is being presented and my model is pre uh, predicting it as green third sample is being presented my model is predicting it as green fourth sample is being presented it is predicted as red okay fifth is predicted as green and sixth is predicted as red so these are the predictions by my model i know actual labels for my test data set so what are the actual labels first is red so it has been predicted correctly second is actually red but my model has predicted it as green so this is wrong third is green my model has predicted as green fourth is red model is predicted as red fifth is green it is also correctly been predicted sixth is red it is also correctly predicted so out of six five are being predicted correctly and one is incorrectly predicted so based on this it is possible for me now to find out the error correct it is possible now to find out the error what would be the error simply if out of six one is wrong then i can find out out of 100 how many are wrong 1 divided by 6 into 100 so 100 divided by 6 right so this is how i can find out the error rate out of see how many samples i have tested i have tested six samples how many are predicted incorrectly one sample so if out of six one is being uh, classified incorrectly out of 100 how many will be classified incorrectly obviously 100 divided by 6 right so if i compute this 100 divided by 6 what i'll be getting 16.67 so that is the error right with this first pass so similarly i'll be training and testing my model five times five times because i am having here five folds right so every time in this way i am computing the error so let us assume that one time it was 16.67 error next time maybe it was zero error whatever it may be 
So whatever are those five errors, ultimately I'll be finding out the mean of those errors and I'll be reporting that as my final error of the model. Are you getting me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Got the concept? Yes, yes. Fine. Now, one important point once again I am trying to focus upon is the stratified sampling. So what I mean by this stratified sampling? Okay, so in stratified sampling what we do is we maintain the original class proportion in the resulting subset. So as I stated here also while preparing the partitions of my data while preparing the force k disjoint sets of equal size from my data, what I want to make sure is, I want to make sure that the original class proportion is intact. So, I want to equally distribute the samples from belonging to different classes in each fold. As I stated, it should not happen that one fold is not having the sample of one of the classes. Right? It should not happen. Otherwise, it would affect our training as well as testing. Because every time while testing, we are picking up one fold. Right? And if all the samples in that fold belong to, say, single class, then it is not possible for me to check the performance of my model for the other class because all the samples belong to one class so it should not happen so every fold will represent correctly all the classes from my distribution right and this concept typically is called as stratified sampling so remember this concept stratified sampling so stratification is an approach to maintain the original class proportion in resulting subsets. Okay? So, now let's proceed with the next approach. And that is leave one out approach. Leave one out. So, so far we have studied two approaches. Holdout method and K-fold cross-validation method. Okay, the next approach is the leave one out approach and usually this leave one out approach can be treated as the special case of k-fold cross validation. It is a special case of k-fold cross validation with the value of k equal to n. What is this n? N is the total number of samples in the training data set. I'll repeat. What is leave one out method? It is a special case of k-fold cross-validation method. Wherein the value of k is equal to total number of samples in the training data set. What does this mean? Let us once again look at our earlier example. In the earlier example, we had n equal to 30. Am I correct? In the last example that we have seen in the previous slide, what was the value of n? n was equal to 30. Total number of samples in my overall uh, data set. Okay? Now, what we are going to do next is, in leave one out, we are assuming or we are having n number of folds. 
In general k fold cross validation, I may have the value of k anything. So if I say it is five fold, then what I do? I partition my data in five folds. But now what I'm saying? I'm saying that I'm having n fold, n fold cross validation. And what is this n? N is the total samples in my data set. Okay, so if n equal to 30, then obviously I'll be having 30 fold cross validation. If n equal to 30, then I'll be having 30 fold cross validation. So what I mean by this 30 fold cross validation? Total number of samples are 30 and I'll be having 30 partitions. I'll be having 30 folds. So obviously in one fold, I am having a single sample, one sample. Are you getting me? Okay. Yes. So, mm. if I am having 30 samples, I will be having 30 folds. Right? And obviously, in every fold, I will be having a single sample, one sample. Right? Now, if I am performing this n-fold cross-validation, obviously, I will be following the strategy for k-fold cross-validation. So, if now, I am having n number of partitions or n number of folds, how many experiments I am going to perform n experiments? Right? And in every experiment, I will be using n minus 1 samples for training and remaining one sample for testing. Do you agree with me? Yes, ma'am. Right? So obviously, I'll be performing n experiments, meaning n times I'm going to train my system. And every time I'm going to use n minus one samples, n minus one folds. Right? So, n minus 1 samples I'll be using for training and one sample that is belonging to one fold is being used for testing. So, every time I'm doing this. So, in n experiments now, I'll be having n errors and the mean of these n experiments, I'll be finding out the final error of my model or my algorithm, right? So, if you look at this process of leave one out, usually the number of samples that those we have, this number is very big, not necessarily 30. 30 is very small number. Whenever we talk about a data set, in our data set, usually we are having hundreds of samples, sometimes thousands. Right, depending on the application. Right, so if I'm having these many samples, these many times I need to perform the experiment. Right, and if, say for example, if I'm having 1000 samples and equal to 1000, how many times I need to perform an experiment? 1000 times. Right, and every time what I'll do, I'll use 999 samples for training and one sample for testing, right? So obviously, this process is computationally very expensive. So it will take much time to process because I'm performing n number of experiments, right? So usually, this leave one out method is being used if comparatively my number of samples in the data set are relatively low. So if I'm having less number of samples, then I may think of using this leave one out method because it is computationally expensive. It, it will take much time if I'm having millions of samples in my data set. Right? But this is also one of the methods for partitioning the data and performing the experiments. Am I clear?
Yes. May I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Now, the next method that we are going to cover is known as bootstrap aggregating. Bootstrap aggregating method. So, this bootstrap aggregating is also known as bagging. And how this bagging word is being framed? B from bootstrap, A G G for and I N G from aggregating. So it it is called as bagging, right? So bootstrap aggregating is also called as bagging. So let's talk about this method. This is really very interesting method. And what we do in this method is we are sampling the data points with replacement to form our training set. So what we mean by sampling with replacement, I'm going to discuss this with one example. Okay, so let's assume that we are having training set with n entries, right? And what we are going to do next is we are going to generate K new data sets. We are going to generate K new data sets. And each data set is of size N dash, which is less than or equal to N. So originally I am having N samples. Out of those N samples, I will be preparing K new data sets. Ti means T1, T2 up to Tk. K new data sets and the size of each data set is less than or equal to the total number of samples that I am having. Okay, and I am going to prepare these data sets by sampling the original data set with replacement. So I am going to sample the data points from the original data set T with replacement. So what I mean by that and what I'll be getting out of this sampling. Let us see with one example. Let us assume that we are having a complete data set wherein for simplicity, just for the sake of understanding, we are assuming that we are having five samples in our data set x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. So overall we are having five samples in our data set. So here my n is equal to 5. What is 5? n is equal to 5. Okay, so I am having five samples. What next I am going to do? I am going to generate k new data sets. I am going to generate k new data sets. Right? And the size of every data set would be less than 5 or equal to 5. So let us assume that my n dash, that is size of my new data set is also 5. It is equal to n. Right? So what I am going to do is, I am going to sample this data set with replacement. What we mean by with replacement, see here, this is my first sampling. This is my first sampling. So this is my T1. This data set is T1. This data set is T2. T3 up to Tk. So I'm going to form now this K different data sets out of these samples and samples. Okay. So. What I'll do is, I'll randomly pick one of the samples. So let us assume that we have picked up this X3. Okay, so X3 is being placed in this new set T1. What is my N dash? N dash is equal to N. So in every set, I want five elements, five data items. So every time for preparing every such data set ti i'll be picking up 
file samples randomly from the given data set right and after picking up the sample i'll be replacing the sample once again so it is not the case that i have picked up x3 and that is being removed from this data set it is not the case that sample is being replaced once again into the original data set right so first time i have picked up x3 and that is being placed in my data set set t1 next time randomly i have picked this x1 and that is being placed here x1 so once again x1 is being replaced i am not removing that from the original data set okay now obviously whenever third time i am randomly picking it may happen that i am picking up once again the same data sample that i have picked earlier it may happen do you agree with me yes ma'am yes so as we are sampling with replacement right whichever was the sample that was picked up earlier that is still available in my original data set and there are the chances that next time i may pick randomly the same sample it may happen so now let us assume that third time whenever i am picking up the sample i have picked up once again x3 right fourth time also i have picked up x3 and fifth time whenever i picking up one sample randomly it has been picked up the x5 sample is being picked up so now in my training set t1 i'll be having x3 x1 x3 x3 x5 so i may have some entries in my ti those are repeated why because i am sampling with replacement okay so in the first iteration in the first experiment these five samples will form my training data set and what about testing data set whichever are the remaining samples right so i am having here x1 i am not having x2 so x2 will go into test set x3 i am having x4 i am not having here so x4 will go into test set so whichever are the remaining samples those will go into the te uh, test set right so every time the number of samples in my test set may differ right every time the number of samples in my test set this number may differ do you agree with me yes yes ma'am so just see here we are having this k experiments so every time we are picking up the samples randomly and that is forming my training set right and the remaining samples those are not present in the respective training set those will go into my test set so in every experiment for training i'll be having any five samples in this scenario and remaining samples will form my test set correct now what i'm going to do next in this bootstrap aggregating or bagging what we do is we are now making as i am having now k experiments right i am going to create k models i am performing the experiment k times so i will be preparing now k models depending on my problem maybe it is classification problem maybe it is regression problem right so i will be performing this experiment k times so k times i'll be preparing the model okay now what obviously will happen see what obviously will be the case every time i'll be getting some performance every time i'll be getting some performance okay now say for example 
the first time i am performing the experiment one and i am using some algorithm say for regression and my task is regression okay so experiment number 1 i am using some regression algorithm and i am coming up with the model right so for experiment number 1 i will be testing now these two samples and i'll be having now some error e1 okay similarly every time i'll be using some regression algorithm and i'll be coming up with the model another model so every time i'm going to find out these errors e1 e2 and so on so for every experiment i'll be having that so if the task is regression then whatever errors those i am getting as the outcome of every experiment i'll be having the average of those results and then i'll say that this is the overall performance of my model final model okay but in case of classification what we do is in boost uh, bootstrap aggregating we come up with the voting what does this mean voting see in experiment 1 right suppose this x4 is being classified with say class 1 in experiment 2 the x4 is being classified say as class 2 in experiment 3 this x4 is being classified as class 1 right in experiment k i am not having that x4 right so out of whichever are my experiments in few of the experiments every sample is being classified with some class now if my first experiment is classifying x4 as 1 my second experiment is classifying x4 as 2 class number 2 my third experiment is classifying x4 as class number 1 then what is the correct class for that x4 sample how to find out the class for that x4 sample so in this case in this scenario what we do is we go for voting so what is voting voting means experiment number 1 has voted for class 1 for this x4 sample right experiment number 2 has voted as class 2 for x4 experiment number 3 has voted as class 1 so ultimately what i'll do is suppose say these three examples right are voting for this x4 i will count the maximum votes for the class so two times it has been classified as class 1 and one time it is classified as class 2 so majority voting so majority votes are for, for class 1 right so i will declare finally that x4 belong to class 1 why because majority times it is been classified as class 1 so finally x4 is of class 1 right so this is my final outcome by voting and then i'll compare this with the actual class of my x4 so if actual class is also 1 then i'll say that it has been properly classified right otherwise it is misclassified so this would be my ultimate output right are you getting me yes are you getting me have you understood the concept or may i repeat repeat it ma'am okay so we are talking about i hope you must have understood about the error computation in case of regression because simply what we are trying to do is we are finding out 
whatever is the number associated and accordingly we will be finding out the average of all the errors and that will be reported as my final outcome okay but as far as classification algorithm is considered as we are performing k different experiments with the data set right we are finding out the number of votes for every class so in experiment number 1 i am having this sample x4 that is being tested okay now we are assuming that this experiment number 1 has predicted class for this x4 as 1 the same sample was tested in experiment number 2 also and experiment number 2 has reported class of this x4 as 2 experiment number 3 has also tested this same uh, sample x4 okay and experiment number 3 has classified this x4 sample with class 1 now if i am performing so many experiments exper k experiments with this similar data set then ultimately if every experiment is reporting some class for the respective example or sample then which class we should pick as the final class for that sample that might be the question because every experiment may predict the in experiment number 1 x4 is tested right and classified as 1 in experiment number 2 x4 is tested and classified as 2 and experiment number 3 it is tested and classified as 1 so what ultimately we do is we find out the majority votes we find out the majority votes so out of 3 experiments let us assume out of 3 experiments two have classified x4 with class 1 and one has classified x4 as class 2 so we pick this class majority class 1 right and we declare finally that class of x4 is 1 because majority of experiments are predicting the class for x4 as 1 are you getting me understood the concept yes okay fine so we are going to conclude the session today in the next session we are going to cover one more such kind of data partitioning method and we'll talk about few issues in machine learning and tomorrow we are going to conclude unit number 1 and we'll start unit number 2 okay so those who have not yet understood the concepts i would recommend all of you to once again listen to the videos and try to understand the concepts these are very basic fundamental concepts okay so let's conclude this session thank you